Move the uh, phone a little bit closer. Maybe you can get in there and see a little bit better. I may actually take the phone and hold it some so you can see a little bit more <clears throat> close up, if that matters. It's good to get away from the painting um, and, and really study it a little bit more without a brush in your hand and then come back to it because you notice things you need to fix. There's always <laughs> errors in my paintings anyway. I'm definitely I'm going to lighten this area and this is where you, you know, I wish the boat wasn't there but it is. If you let your eyes close down until they're almost closed, we'll say squint but don't wrinkle your forehead and give yourself a headache. Just let your relax, let your eyes close and you look here and you look there. This is about correct, about the right value. This actually, I'm going to go darker here because just here at the bottom, I know you can't see it, there's an area that's blue and it's much darker, a little bit uh, more saturated or richer blue than what's up here, right? The sh for, I don't understand what goes on, which is fine, but all of this is a little bit darker. So I'm gonna go a little darker here. This area here, I'm gonna lighten the entire thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Probably take a very, very faint whitish color, maybe add a touch of blue and put a little glaze over that, but I want that to show through. The other thing I've noticed, and you all probably noticed it, it's just, you know, when you get doing this, there's always things you miss. This door, I've actually, when I sketched it, I've got it over to the right, <clears throat> sorry, a little bit more. I need to widen this a little. This is too narrow. This is probably about right. One thing I'm going to choose to do is I'll come over to the left a little bit. I'll come over to the right a little bit, but I'm not going to make that door that close to that edge. That just doesn't make sense to me. That's a little tight. I, I, again, it doesn't to me negatively impact what I'm trying to do here. The story, I don't think this is fabrication, but I, I don't want to just have that little bitty tiny strip that, I don't know, just don't look right. The other thing is I couldn't really read this. I had a guess at what that said. So what I did, if it's downloaded, I downloaded it on my laptop. It has, okay, here we go. So I did find another picture. Now this is in shadow. You notice this light's not on it. So this stuff's darker. It's probably a more recent picture. I don't know. This doesn't look as washed out, but again, the sun's shining on this one. But I can see that says Osprey Cruises. So I want to try to make that. This says Dolphin Watch. I want to put some of that stuff in. And I notice there's some stuff going on back in there. Now, is that a reflection? I don't know. But I, I do want to put a little bit of a hint of some life going on and not just dark windows because that's what I saw in the other one. So just a little more info. Um, and I think I'm going to have to get rid of this or something because I've got to make that Pier 9 fit between this space. And I think I've got it down a little low too because I brought this up. This is definitely higher than what was there. So I'm going to have to figure out something. Again, if I thought that what I did um, took away <clears throat> from, again, the story, which means, you know, to me, it's my wife looking at this, my kids looking at this, and they go, oh, yeah, that's that place down at St. Padre Island. That's so cool. Yeah, I remember we had an awesome dinner there. That's what this is for. And if me having these things a little bit out of whack um, took away from that or somebody noticed them, then I would put more effort into um, fixing them. And again, I want things to be accurate, but I also um, am not interested in taking... Um, I, this is not me doing a portrait. You know, if this was a, a, an animal or a person or it was, um, you know, let's say it's a mountain range that um, 
someone would know every little bump on the hilltop, then yeah, you got to put that effort into it. But something like this, I personally, I just don't sweat uh, sweat that stuff as much. And I'm, that, that's not an excuse to get sloppy or nothing, get lazy. Just being honest. So let's see. Depending on how light I do this, I, I don't necessarily have to add blue because the blue, I mean, it would just be a smidge touch. And I, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Just a little blue. Because I don't want this to, I want it, it's got to be lighter than that. That's the whole point of this. So, <clears throat> tough thing will be feathering it. Because I don't, as this comes up, I really just want to do that in this area. Just so light. This is dry brushing. This is called dry brushing. It's just a smidge of water, just a little tiny bit of water <clears throat> to help the paint come out. You really, you really just I'll say experience but it's it's to be honest it's more of a guess <laughs> on how this is going to look when it dries just the tip there's less paint coming out which I will use to my advantage as I go up to make that softer. Hmm. Hmm. contemplating letting it dry and this is something you can do I say dangerous but it's a little light for me maybe it's a little too white um, if you let it sit just a little there's a magic moment you can wipe some of that off not all of it and it gets more to where you wanted it to be so let's see Hard to tell if I'm picking any up because it's white on a white paper towel. We'll see. We'll let it dry. My guess is I'll have to go over it um, again. Gotta get way back. It's better than it was. I'm not saying it's perfect. But I want this to lay back, right? That's distant, and it shows here. And, and that's another thing that I, I've said this before. And it just comes with pain uh, and practice. But when you are looking at this, I don't see the hole. I just see this. So I'm like, oh, I don't like that. I'll fix that later. And then I'll come and do all this other stuff and then I step back and that's fine, right? I don't, sometimes you get so wrapped up in that little area, but it's really about how it affects the whole. And you need to, um, this will sound weird, you'll need to sacrifice areas. So, you know, one thing that I don't know how, you know, if, if I've said this uh, apologize, but I'm actually, before I get to mumble too much, I'm actually taking ultramarine blue and that phthalo blue because that's dark and that's a blue. And I want to put a little bit of this right down here. Just want that to be a little bit richer. And I'll 
probably do a little bit more of that. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. There was a um, little, little painting lesson. John Singer Sargent. I, I'm al always curious to know how many people that don't paint, that aren't artists, know who John Singer Sargent is. And, and maybe most people, you know, duh, John. Um, everybody knows who that is. I, I don't know. I know everybody knows who Monet and Picasso and uh, that's, you know. But when you get to some folks like Pizarro or others, a lot of people go, well, I don't know who that is. I've never heard of him. <clears throat> Turn of the century. Uh, he actually was born in America. Uh, I think it was France is where he trained. Kind of the considered one of the greatest uh, portrait artists of all time. Uh, he was putting his stuff in um, in some of the galleries. The I'll say, I think they called it the the salon. But he was trying to get recognized, and critics were kind of on him because he painted an incredible artist. I mean, absolutely brilliant. Go check his work out. But it was different than that of the times, and people, you know, he was not getting rave reviews. And there's a very famous uh, critique. A critic made a comment in, like, the local newspaper that many artists have kind of attached to and learned from. And this critic said that something to the, something like the young sergeant has finally learned the most important lesson in art, and that's to omit. He's finally learned how to omit. And that's like, wow, that's, what is what are they talking about? And I'm darkening this, obviously. Um, <clears throat> and basically, if you go out, you know, painting from a photograph is a lot easier to me to get the effect of distance because when you take a picture, let's see if we can find that here. There in focus, the camera focused here. The people in the background are out of focus. They're blurry. And that's the way I would paint it. I would want them to be blurry. And that's the way they are in this picture, right? But if I was standing there from life and looking at that, I look at Amber and Matthew, and if I continue to look at them, but I'm painting the people behind them, then they're out of focus. But when you're in, in life, you're going to look at those people and they're going to be in focus again. So really everything you look at, it will be in focus once you look at it, if that makes sense. The goal for this style of painting, the style I do anyway, is to, the things that are not that important or the things that are not the focus you want to lose them. You don't want to put all that effort into this other stuff. This painting's not as big a deal, I guess, but if it was, um, let's, uh, well, I mean, this one. The more detail I put here and the less I put back here, even in these two people, the more they're going to stand out. So I don't really necessarily want to paint every eyelash on this little girl or this guy's every little hair. I want to push that. I, I want to omit that. I, they need to be there. There needs to be other people there because it's part of that story. But they're the focus. So did that make any sense? Did I? Are you digging my rap? Am I making any sense here? All right. What, what was I doing? Let's get back to work. Um... I'll do the little um, flat here, widen that a little, or make it look a little bit more like uh, it needs to, because that's not, 
and I'll have to go at this several times because that you know how many times I had to put this down or this down to make it that dark. You put it down, it's you saw, you go back and watch it, it was black. It dries, it dries transparent, it dries dull. That's just acrylics. Something you'll have to um, work on. I enjoy it. Um, but it's definitely um, something you just have to have to do. Restate, restate. And if you don't like that, then don't do acrylics or not at least the, not the way I paint. I'm sure there's other artists that do things differently than me. Maybe more better than I do it. I you got to find your own way. That's the most important thing. Take information other artists are teaching you. Hmm. White shines like this. It shines like that. I need to really accentuate that. But, you know, really look at things like this just kind of of interest and you know if if you watch somebody's video you watch somebody or learn how somebody paints and if you get one if you learn one thing from that person it's golden and uh you know of the artists that i love the ones that i admire admire um are the um, Daniel Gerhardt's, Morgan Weisling, Richard Schmidt, of course, that uh, just passed away this past year. Most folks that are artists, me included, would say he was the, he was the greatest living artist of our time. And uh, but th uh, Robert Hagen, Craig Nelson, you know, I could name several others, but there's Something from every one of them that I've learned, and I'll say stolen from, right? They've shared it. It's not like uh, it was, I looked in their window, they were trying to be secretive. You know, they, they uh, you learn one valuable lesson. Like, like, um, I've learned, I've learned a few things from, from, Morgan Weisling. You can go check his stuff out. Uh, I was fortunate enough for um, him, and I was flabbergasted. I, I really acted like a dummy. I didn't know what was going on. Uh, I thought somebody was kidding with me, but he called me on my birthday, and Amber had reached out to him, and he was kind enough to um, critique some of my work, and uh, it was funny because after I realized it wasn't a joke, Amber, had, bless her heart, had gone out and downloaded the pictures she could find that I had painted, and they were several years old. I mean, I had gotten so much better than the paintings that he was looking at. The ones he was looking at was, you know, several years old. So I was like, no! So I actually, uh, he, he took the time to let me give him my... Uh, my website and um, he went out and gave me a f several things we talked gosh for quite an hour wonderful uh, meant a lot to me as you can tell but he has so much to teach so fantastic uh, love his work very knowledgeable um, and if you look at Daniel Gerhardt's whom I love um, He's, he's, he's a bravura artist, meaning uh, big, huge brush strokes, lots of beautiful work in the face, the detail, the, but the hair, the dress, he's loose. And I love his stuff, but if you go look, you, you want to see somebody who plays with temperature uh, brilliantly, uh, you'll, you'll go check him out. Uh, he, I, that's what I learned from him, if nothing else, is, is uh, 
temperatures. He, I mean, he pushes the temperatures, but he, but he does it beautifully. Uh, let's see here. Let's, um, let's, I don't know if my mumbling is a distraction for you guys. Uh, it beats me. I don't know. Because again, I don't, uh, I, I promise I don't ever talk when I'm painting. Um, so I'm really wanting to give you guys what, uh, and again, there's different audiences here. I, you know, there's probably, for the most part, I started this uh, for people on Facebook, just friends that uh, I'm just trying to encourage to take up this hobby, this fantastic hobby. But I know there's some, possibly a, f a couple, that are from uh, wetcanvas.com, as I've shared this there as well, that might be artists. Uh, and, you know, they're out here. They, they you know, Many of them probably know a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about. So I don't know. Blah, blah. I'm, I'm mumbling. Uh, I, this is a different color. There's a little bit of a greenish just trying to do something a little different here. So this, this doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to, this is when I go away from this. I, I try 90% of the painting, 90% to just be a slave to what I see here. But then it gets to a point like, let's say, and, and a lot of this I'm screwed up because of the light. Like this door. If you look at that door, it's this tall. This, this doorway is this tall. This is this long. But if, if this is going to do that, which it does, I've pushed it a little too much. Eh, no, I don't think I have. Let me look at that. If this little hole is going to do this, then that door not only is going to be the whole length, but that red will be more up in here. And I've put it, I've actually got it up to there. It just doesn't stand out like this piece. So uh, I'm going to work a little bit more on uh, that. Now that's very transparent. I don't like the way that looks. So the choices I have or to let that dry. I don't know if you probably can't see, but it drags. It's an ugly spot. Or go thicker, which didn't help. So I'm going to see what happens there. I have two choices. One is to take a wet paper towel, wipe that up, do it again, or just let it dry, and then paint over it. I'm, I'm not a fan. Let me show you what I'm, I'm talking about if you can't see it. Uh, so there's places in a painting that that little drag where just the top of the canvas tooth uh, can help. I mean, there's areas that I'll do that. But I don't know why that's not one of them. I don't see that at all in the water. The water is real um, much more defined in each one of those. So um, let's. Push a little bit more, little areas. Big gob, big gob of paint. It's supposed to have a little yellow in it, but that's a pretty good gob of white. What I'm just trying to do is a few spots. I want it to be nice, lit up. Brighter, 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 brighter. Push that light, push that light. And I think I'm gonna have to paint over I think I'm going to have to paint over that, which is going to be a few whacks at that, a few 
few whacks. Robert Hagen, a few whacks. Another fantastic artist that it doesn't get nearly um, the following that he deserves. He's an Australian artist. Written, written a few books. Had a TV show for a while. Um, and again, he's another one that I've been so fortunate to have had some communications with. He actually sent me a, um, this was a master's class he was, he was starting to do. And it was his, uh, I'll say a preliminary taping of this uh, class in, in depth he did on um, on elephants, and I've got that video that he, and, he, and again he it was a uh, DVD that he mailed me from Australia, which was so cool. Amazing artist. It's another thing, you know, I, I think people should do. I try to do it. And that's give uh, thanks and, you know, state the people that I've learned from. I haven't, some of this stuff I've first had to figure out on my own because it's, it's acrylic. And it's, uh, you know, I follow oil artists for the most part. So a lot of the technique that I do the way I put down paint, I just, you know, you just got to figure it out, or I had to. Uh, now, there are artists along the way that um, that were acrylic artists. Again, I'm not a fan, necessarily, of most acrylic artists, uh, at least, I'll say professionally. But Jerry Arnell... PBS, I guess. I don't know he had a had a show called Paint This, and there was another one that was the Jerry Arnell School of Fine Art, which was the one I started watching. And he actually broke away from that show, which was weird. I guess PBS or somebody bought it and ran all those shows, and then he he started his own another show called Paint This. But he's an acrylic artist, and, and I learned a lot of just the basics, just basics of, you know, dilute acrylics with water and how much to do and, you know, those types of things. The reason I use a Stay Wet palette is because he used one. Now, he used the little spongy thing in it that I never liked, but my point is to uh, credit those that uh, deserve it, that, you know, that have been kind enough to share their knowledge. I don't ever want to think, anybody to think that I, I just you know, locked myself up for 20 years and figured it out, you know, what I'm able, you know, what little I'm able to create with a brush and paint, I just figured it out. And I always say that I'm self-learned, not self-taught. I've never been to a class. I've never attended in person, you know, painting class or anything like that. I didn't go to college to study it. Or, so I've done it how you're seeing me do it. But I, I've, it's not like I haven't had knowledge. I, I've, I feel like I've learned from the, some of the best in the world because I've got YouTube and I've you know, purchased a bunch of VHSs back in the day of the artists that actually did that stuff. Um, I'm just blabbing. I'm telling you, I don't do this. I don't do this. I don't talk while I'm painting. So if I'm not making sense, I apologize. It's so interesting to me how, and, let, and you know, they could be, these pictures could be taken, you know, years apart, but 
maybe it's the sun hitting it because this looks pretty red that just looks distressed and I'll, I'll love it I, I mean that's what you would think you would see on something like this right Alright, so we're going to go, I don't even need to look at this. I need to put a little more red here, a little hint of red there. I need to make this door um, make a little more sense. It's probably not in the right spot. From your all's angle, I'm sure it's way off because you are skewed. I didn't mean that personally, like you skewed. Um, so this is not going to be there because it's out of the way. We'll have to figure that out. Um, let's... Am I happy with the building? Am I happy with the building? Mm, I think so. So let's... But what time are we looking at? Yeah, we're doing all right. 30 minutes in. Um, I am going to cheat. I'm going to cheat. Just be honest with you, I'm cheating. Um, I just noticed something that I need to come over here and do. now but I need to do it sometime oh that was the stairs didn't I I came down into the steps dummy that's in shadow while I got some color on here I'm just going to put a little hint of something going on up in yonder that's all it takes. A little hint. Now there's a. Is it important? Hmm? There's a hint of some other reflection down there. And it's also there. Like at the top of this. I didn't make that up. I didn't. It's there. You see it. You see it. I don't know if y'all are rocking the metallic if you <clears throat> and I'm gonna try my best. I may this is maybe where I, I have to take <clears throat> the camera in my hand. And this is gonna be a struggle to get it to go over top of that, but not, I don't want it to look like a sticker. Um, so there's a way that I do that. Uh, maybe different than some people I don't. Maybe you'll get something out of it. I guess we're good, so I'm hesitating as you can tell. Um, I want to fix something that's there's uh, you know that's what this is. This is this is about I keep saying it, but this is about putting paint down, letting the paint dry, later on fixing it. Um, and if you don't put that paint down, even if it's wrong, then you're never going to have anything to fix. So that's that's kind of how I paint. Now, if you are Robert, or if you're a Richard Schmid, you know who. If you've studied Richard Schmid, as I have, <clears throat> and that's what I want to fix anyway. He he was such a um, phenom that when he was in school and I heard this from one of his profess professors that this was back in gosh what the 50s I guess I don't know he was in uh, 
Chicago School of Fine Art, I think is where he went. I may have that wrong. But he was so, he was doing stuff that no one else had ever done, but the, the teachers had never seen it. And they, he's, he's the only student, I think, to this day that they videotaped him painting. Like, you know, he's a sophomore in, college, in this school. And the teachers would watch. The teachers would come and watch him paint just because he just did it. He's just different. Uh, he's amazing. And if you're Richard Smith, and you, I'm sorry about hitting that. <clears throat> he does what he's called, and other people, I guess, call a, a la prima, which it means all at once. And he does oil. You know, you really, in my opinion, I can't do that with acrylic because I've, you know, it loses its fibers. Um, he would put something down and for the most part, leave it alone. And there's a lot to learn from that. A big brush stroke. Now, did he just put it down and never to no. know? I mean, he would put in like a rooftop and then he would put some strokes over top of it to make it look interesting. But yeah, I can't do that. I've got to, I got to put paint down and then fix it and then fix it and restate it and fix it. And fix it. Which again, I used to bother me. Now I enjoy it. It's, it's very little stress to me. I don't have to sit here and go like when I put that in. Oh my gosh, if this was oil, if this was thick oil paint and it was all wet, I would really need to do it all in a you know short amount of time, or I would need to spray retouch varnish back over top of it to bring it back kind of wet to paint into, or I need to let it dry. And so to me it's uh I would be stressed putting these strokes down. I would go, oh, did I do, oh my gosh, if I did it wrong and you all seen me do things wrong like this, I don't have to take a palette knife and pull it up. I can paint over it. Let it drop in over. <clears throat> Alright. Let's railing in the frame. Railing in the frame. What's our time? I got a little time. I got a little time. Let's do we freehand it or do we cheat? What do you all think? What do you all think? Let's um is this the brush? Is that the brush? I don't think so. This might be the brush, and you all have not seen me paint with one of these. This is a round. But if you notice, it's not perfect. It's got some hair sticking out. And for me, that helps soften that when I put it down. Also, You know, this one, you see how, and this is me, th these brushes are not like this. This is me abusing a brush, which I ought to be ashamed of myself. If I, if I use that brush and I put it down, it will, it will kind of naturally soften the edge. If I put a lot of water and a lot of paint, I can get a straight line because these brushes will, these bristles will lay back down. But if I do a bright, a dry brushy, dry brushy, So it, 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 it softens the edge of it because of the brush. <clears throat> and I kind of want that. I don't want this to look perfectly straight, even, even if it is. So, what am I going to use? What am I going to use? I got to use something. Let's use this one. Do I use a straight edge? Yeah, I guess so. I suppose. Gosh, that's just cheating, isn't it? Isn't it? Let's see. Let's mix that color if we can. Or something like it. It doesn't make it perfect. But we definitely don't want this. The main thing is we get the value right, and we don't want it to look... Um, it, it, was, it was probably blue that's just sun-worn out. And it's important to me that we kind of mimic that. And, and, you know, if the color's not perfect, that's okay. The color, for me, is not...
critical. It's that the value, the value is right. Value. So what, and here's what I mean. The sun's shining on that. So that's not dark. It's easy to look at that and go, it's kind of dark. This needs to look, it needs to be a little, and I can get closer eyes, it's a little bit darker than this. Obviously not even close to this, but it needs to be, it needs to have a color, of a value that it looks like the um, sun's hitting it. Pretty tough, pretty tough. Um, gosh, do I just chance it? Do I just do it? Well, you know me, I don't want to, I don't want to cheat. And is it cheating? No, it's not cheating. Not cheating. And again, I I know it sounds. I want this to be kind of broken. I don't want it to be that broken. But I don't want it to be perfect. It's so easy to look at that and go, "Oh, I know what that is. I know what it is." Left brain, right? The left side of my brain. Left brain. Um, I got two brains. Um, and I am. I do have my hand on it. I, I'm resting my hand on my other hand. I apologize. This is where, gosh, can I do? You know, I was about, I was almost going to take the camera and hold it while I do this, but I gotta have this steady. I want you all to uh, see what this, what how this is doing. Let me get it framed up. Let me get this framed up, and then I'll zoom in. And I'm not at all saying you should do this. This this drives some people nuts. When I teach, uh, <laughs> there are people that just cannot do this. They cannot loosen up like this. That they, they they they, I don't know what it is in them. It drives them bonkers. Uh, but this is what I mean. I, so, so there's a broken edge. There's places it's sharp. There's places it's broken. That's what I want, right? So when I step back here, I don't want. I, there's places that you want razor sharp edges, but I don't see one on the outside of that frame, and it's probably because these are close together. So, I want it to look like an old um, dock, if you will. So this is how I roll. So what I'm doing is I've got some water in there, I've got that paint, and I'm just using the tip. Just a tip that much. Right? That's it. That's it. Now this is a little tougher because it's up in the middle of the painting. And, you know, this is kind of... Um, any of the artists that are out there that might be watching. I think most of the artists appreciate this. I think average person wants this to look like a photograph. And I, when I started, that's what I wanted. You know, I was like, hey, I want to, I didn't, I wasn't artsy. I, I, I didn't know what Rivera was or any of that stuff. I wanted to paint a tree and look like a tree, exactly like a tree. And you know, now if you look at my trees, I don't ever paint, I can't remember ever painting a tree and the whole subject of the painting was a tree. That was the most important thing, right? So now, now when I paint trees, they look, <laughs> they look like that, right? They're just a part of a bigger picture. They're part of a bigger story. So, <laughs> if you'd have told me 20 years ago, hey, John, 20 years from now, you'll be painting trees and they look like this, I'd go, not interesting. But, the artists out there know that the big struggle is loosening up.
most all of us, me included. Now I put a little more water in there so that's a little sharper. I should have cheated, but I'm not. I didn't cheat. It's not cheating. You know, if you want to use a straight edge, that's okay, but I would say that um, that's not making you a better artist. It may be making your painting look better. But if you're trying to get better at art, better at drawing, better at this stuff, I think, again, I've always said, because I've had people ask, hey, is this cheating? And I always say, if the person that, let's say, buying a painting from you, if you think that they think that you're painting that whole thing from your hand, then, then it's wrong to trace it or take a, you know, I don't know, digital art, you know, let me go into Photoshop and take a photograph of something, of a horse, and then I'm going to sketch around it and then change some colors. And if the person buying it doesn't care, then well, who, who the hell cares, right? I mean, it's just uh, something to hang on the wall. But for me, that's not, that's not what I'm doing here. So, I hope you can appreciate that me doing that. I, again, I think there's an artsy quality to that. And that's what I kind of uh, appreciate. Now, is, the, is this in the water? No, probably. I, I, maybe if I looked real close. But I just wanted to put a hint. A hint of that. A hint. Because it makes sense, right? It's that color's up there. You'd think it'd be down here too. Um, what are we looking at? Time. All right, 47 minutes. Let me stop. I might go ahead and do the rest of this because I mean, there's no reason for you to sit there. You saw me do these three, right? <laughs> to sit there and watch me do all that, that's going to take forever. So I'll probably do that if I, if I thought I was cheating or something. Uh, I wouldn't do it, but I mean, it's exactly what you just saw me do.